Ugh. Iron Man 3 is really good. So yeah, here's the thing. When I went into this project, there were only three Marvel Cinematic Universe movies that I had never seen. Iron Man 3, Thor 2, and Ant-Man. Yeah, I kind of mentally checked out for most of Phase 2. In my mind, I assumed nothing was going to top the first Avengers. So this is my first time watching some of these movies, and I gotta say, for this one, I am pleasantly surprised. Everyone I knew told me that this movie sucked ass. When it came out, I asked my friends who saw it if I should watch it myself, and they said no. They said it's not that good. This is one of the best Marvel movies, if you ask me. And I'm not joking. I feel like I have to explain myself because it's a pretty bold claim, but I'm gonna try my best. First of all, it's directed by Shane Black, who is super underrated. He makes really good movies. If you haven't seen The Nice Guys, you're missing out. You should probably go watch it. Right, look, when you're talking to your doctor, just tell him you have a spiral fracture of the left radius. No! No! Deep breath. No! Plus, he's directed Robert Downey Jr. before the Iron Man movies even started. Shane Black is pretty good with actors, so the performances here are all pretty good. He also is good at intercutting action into a story in a way that makes sense. But I'll get to that in a little bit. Now, this movie's got a pretty good tone. I thought it was going to be all dark and edgy when I looked at the poster and the trailers, but it's fairly well balanced. It feels very comic booky. It's kind of goofy and fun. One kind of weird thing, though, is that this movie is completely useless when you compare it to the rest of the cinematic universe. Nothing really happens in this one that affects the rest of the franchise. But you know what? I actually don't mind. If you look at this movie as a kind of standalone, fun action-adventure movie, it works way better. I don't need to think about where Nick Fury is or what Captain America's doing. Just let me have fun, okay? That's what Iron Man 3 is. It's weaponized fun. So real quick, let's talk about the dumb shit that's in this movie because, as usual, there's some dumb shit. So in this movie, Tony tells the main villain his home address because he kind of gets mad at him. He's like, hey, come get me. This is where I live, you son of a bitch. I'm not upset that Tony Stark told the main villain his home address. That's something that Tony Stark would do. Besides, I think if the main villain is so smart, it wouldn't really be hard to find Tony's home address. It's not like he exactly tried to hide it before. What does bug me is that he won't let Pepper leave the house even though she reasonably doesn't want to be there when it's the target of a terrorist attack. We're going out of town. Okay, we've been through this. Nope. Yep. The man and says no. Why are you putting her life at risk? What's wrong with you? I find this to be completely out of character for him. So then his ex-girlfriend comes to visit around the same time, and while Tony and Pepper are arguing about dumb shit, she notices a fucking missile coming at the house. And this is how she reacts. Scott, I said we, no. um, what? Do we need to worry about that? That's kind of a calm reaction. I'd be running and screaming if I were you. Oh wait, maybe she didn't warn them because she's evil and she's working with the bad guys? Well then why would you go to his house if you know there's a missile that's gonna hit it? That seems like a kind of big risk. Also, there's this really weird interaction with Tony Stark and this little kid. So Tony Stark breaks into this kid's house, and the kid is like, Who the fuck are you? And I'm thinking to myself, Who the fuck doesn't know who Tony Stark is? Oh well, he's a kid. Maybe he doesn't know who Tony Stark is. Fine, I'll excuse it. But then he says this. That's... is that Iron Man? So wait, you know who Iron Man is, but not Tony Stark? Are you, like, stupid or something? And then he says this. Technically, you're dead. So wait, you do know Tony Stark? What the fuck? And then, and then this happens. What's your name? Harley. And you're... The mechanic. Tony. Do you know Tony Stark or not? What is happening? Now, while this kid isn't really that great, he's not awful either. Like, I've seen way worse child actors. He doesn't bother me that much. Well, my mom already left for the diner and dad went to 7-Eleven to get scratchers. I guess he won, because that was six years ago. Hmm. Which happens, dads leave. No need to be a pussy about it. Here's what I need. Now, probably my favorite thing in this movie is the action. The thing is, the action is exactly how I like it in these movies. It's only around when absolutely necessary. Too many of these movies just throw in fights and dumb action in order to keep the audience interested. I'm looking at you. But this one foregoes that in order to have action that services the story. As such, it has my favorite Iron Man action scenes ever. 
Tony fighting off helicopters in his crumbling house without use of his missiles or flight systems. That is so much fun to watch. That's like a level in Uncharted. We get this insane scene where he has to fight off this Terminator chick without his suit while handcuffed. Tony has to find out how to kill this lady with just his ingenuity, and if you ask me, that's his superpower, not the suit. I like action scenes like this because it's more than just watching our hero do karate against another guy who's doing karate. It forces our character to solve problems in creative ways. This shit is awesome, I don't know why more Marvel movies don't do this. And even when Tony has his suit, it's engaging. He fucking kills a dude by shooting him through the chest with his unibeam. <laughs> That's just so cool, I'm sorry. I don't have to have a reason to like that. It's just cool. Instead of the climax being a big dumb fight between two robots, it has Tony mobilizing his entire Iron Man army so that he can jump between the suits, since the bad guy can just break his suits with like no effort. This shit is so fun. Why didn't anybody tell me that this movie is fun? Plus you get a scene of Tony saving like 13 dudes who are falling out of an airplane. Like that is my secret kink give me a scene of the hero saving people that's all i ask remember how in both of the other movies the main villain just shows up out of nowhere with a big robot suit that they built off screen well this movie doesn't have that however in all fairness i'm gonna have to classify the evil nano machine explosion squad as a full-on erjb it's not really clear why these guys are super evil like this guy's motivations are clear the main villain we know why he's upset but his lackeys they don't have any motivation at all. It's completely non-existent. So yeah, these villains are really cartoonish, but at least they're consistently cartoonish. Even when crazy, silly shit happens, this movie is still self-aware. You, you breathe fire? Now the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this movie is the twist about the Mandarin. In this movie, they take the classic comic book villain, the Mandarin, and they change it up a little bit. The Mandarin's not who you think it is. Don't hurt the face, I'm an actor. No, oh, my stupid, corny, cartoon villain wasn't represented the same way he was in the comics. Yeah, well, get over it, alright? If you bitch about this movie but you like Guardians of the Galaxy, then you're an idiot, because everybody in that movie is completely different than they are in the comics. Star-Lord's dad is an ego, and he doesn't have powerful demigod abilities. This whole movie is basically completely made up. Changing the characters to service the narrative of these new stories is acceptable in my opinion, as long as you do it right. I read a lot of comics, and if I got mad every time something was different, I would have died of a heart attack back when I saw Fantastic Four. If you saw this movie when it was released and you didn't like it, I implore you to revisit it. I swear it's probably better than you remember. These movies are usually predictable and corny, and this is the first Marvel sequel that decided to go in a completely new direction, and I totally respect it for that. Even if everything doesn't work, it's still fun to watch the entire way through. So 8 out of 10, a pleasant surprise. Honestly, I hate working here. They are so weird. So that was pretty great, right? Phase two, off to a pretty good start, all right? So what do we have to watch next? Let's look. <laughs> Thor 2 is so whack. Now I know I said in the last video that Thor 1 was not as bad as Thor 2, but now that I really think about it, I do think I was wrong. This one is like 10% better, but that's not a big compliment. It's effectively the same level of shittiness as Thor 1, except you don't have the Dutch angles, so hey, I'll take it. The characters in this movie are absolutely horrible. Anybody who's not named Thor or Loki is an insufferable piece of shit. Padme is still whack. The bad guys are still whack. Thor's stupid fucking friends are whack. Kat Dennings is still not funny. Getting weird now. The jokes are just horrible. Every bit of writing in this movie just sucks. Even the normal interactions are awkward. I think I'm gonna have the sea bass. Sea bass, yeah, sea bass is good. Sea bass, sea bass, sea bass, sea bass, sea bass, sea bass, sea bass. Sea bass. I swear, you could watch this movie with the audio turned off and you would still know what's happening. That's how worthless the script is. Nothing in this movie really matters that much. Thor's mom dies. Which doesn't really matter because I don't think Thor even says two words to the lady. Oh no. He's so sad. I guess I should mention some good things in the movie. Uh, the effects are good. Um, I like this scene where Loki turns into Captain America. With the confidence, I 
can feel the righteousness surging. This is kind of a backhanded compliment, but I think Anthony Hopkins is hilarious in this movie. Like, he just keeps screaming in every scene that he's in, and it just makes me laugh every time. Your birthright was to die as many as are needed. I really can't say anything else about this movie. It is that mediocre. There's nothing to make fun of. It's just meh. These movies are at their worst when they are forgettable. I just watched this movie and I legitimately don't remember anything about it. This is the weakest movie in phase two and it's one of the worst movies in the entire MCU. Five out of 10, four out of 10, I don't know, one of them, five or four out of 10, it, I don't care, it sucks. So in the last video, I had this really funny joke that I was gonna make. You know how in Captain America 1, how Bucky, like, tries to hit on Peggy. But then, like, Peggy doesn't really care. And she likes Steve Rogers instead. I was gonna make a joke in the last video about that. How they should call him Cucky Barnes. You know, because he gets cucked by, by Steve. I don't know, it seemed funny at the time. Who the hell is Cucky? Now, I know a lot of people like this movie. And when I first saw it, I did not like it that much. But granted, I was kind of being an asshole. This movie is pretty good. I'll put it on the list. Now people like this movie a lot because they say it's a cool, gritty spy thriller. But when I watched it, I just saw a corny comic book movie. Like it's really the same as all the other ones. There's a lot of corny shit in this movie. This movie has a supercomputer that is fueled by the brain of a Nazi super scientist. I am not a recording Fräulein. Why does your supercomputer have a German accent? <laughs> you built a supercomputer and you gave it a German accent. Like, you went out of your way to do that. <laughs> this movie has a scene where Nick Fury uses a lightsaber to cut a hole in the ground, Bugs Bunny style, in order to run away from a 90-year-old cyborg assassin. This movie's just corny as hell, but... Honestly, I like it. It feels like a comic book movie. Like, it doesn't take itself too seriously. This stuff is sort of tongue-in-cheek, so hey, I don't mind. However, while I do like this movie and I think it's pretty solid, there's a lot of things I still don't like about it. I feel like I say that in every one of these reviews. I really can't help it. They're all the same. The main thing I hate, and this is probably my biggest hatred that I have for anything in the MCU, but I hate that Captain America meets with Peggy when she's old. Remember how I said I loved the ending of the first Captain America movie? That was like the only redeeming factor of that movie, in my opinion. Their relationship and that ending is completely ruined by having him hanging out with her in the future. Think about it from a storytelling perspective. If Captain America wakes up in the future and everybody that he knows is dead, the girl that he loves is dead, and then Bucky shows up, it makes his relationship with Bucky a lot stronger. Also, the effect on her looks like shit. Stop putting CGI on people's faces. It looks weird. It never looks natural at all. Another thing I hate about this is that it makes Steve Rogers look really fucking creepy. Not only does he seem creepy by having a crush on a deteriorating old woman with Alzheimer's, he looks extra creepy by trying to fuck her niece right after the funeral in the next movie. If Peggy was already dead when he woke up, this would have been way less creepy. Also, this is probably a good time to talk about another thing I wanted to mention in the last video. I really, really don't like Black Widow. Scarlett Johansson is in like every one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, and she's in this one the most. And I hate her. Black Widow suffers from the fake strong female character syndrome. Mike from Red Letter Media describes this problem pretty well. Here's this character, you know, they were trained by every agency on the planet. They were ex KGB, CIA. <laughs> she jumps on the roof of a train and then flips off the side, <laughs> kicks through the window, and then, and then fights 15 guys and then flies into the control booth of the train, <laughs> all, all in kind of sped up slow motion. <laughs> That's the strong female character. And yeah. Then this is not a character. She is not a real person. Everything that she says is either sassy, snarky confidence, or something like sexual and weird. She has no dialogue in any of these movies that tells us anything about her personality. Soviet slug, no rifling. Bye bye bikinis. Oh my God, who writes this lady's dialogue? Oh, and onto the subject of Marvel characters that I do not like. I hate Falcon. This movie introduces Sam Wilson, AKA the Falcon, AKA nobody's favorite superhero. I don't have a big, well thought out argument for why I don't like him. 
I just don't like him. He's whack and he shows up all the time and I can't stand him. I don't like Black Widow, but at least I get to see her do cool fight scenes. She also has other enjoyable qualities. Falcon just flies around and he says dumb shit. I feel like the characters in the movie don't even like him. Thanks, Sam. Don't thank me. I'm not thinking that thing. His name is Red Wing. I'm still not thinking it. Anyway, those are my dumb nitpicks, so let's talk about why I actually like this movie. First of all, the script is actually really solid in this movie. I have no problem with the writing at all. And if I say that about a Marvel movie, I'm, I mean it, okay? With most of these movies, you have to try to avoid cringing every time you hear a joke or any line of dialogue whatsoever. This movie doesn't have that problem. It's pretty solid. Actually, I take it back. There are a few awkward lines. I told you, S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't negotiate. Who are you talking to? That man is dead. One thing I will praise the Captain America trilogy for is that it's an actual trilogy. All three of the movies are connected. Compare this to the Iron Man trilogy or the Thor trilogy. Those movies barely have anything to do with one another. But the Captain America movies all flow well together, and I like that. Also, real quick, there's one thing that I noticed, and I think I'm the only one who pieced this together. This movie is entirely ripped off from Metal Gear Solid. This isn't wishful thinking. I'm not making this up. It's not even a bad thing. Noticing this has actually made me like the movie a lot more. So let's list just a few things that I noticed. Cyborg Assassin with a hidden connection to the main character. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. A scene with our hero fighting a bunch of dudes in an elevator. The entire first mission on a boat with Russian pirates. A secret society of corrupted government officials. Now yeah, maybe I'm just imagining it, but judging by how these guys are huge nerds, I want to at least believe that one of these is intentional. This movie's just exciting. I usually don't like spy movies at all, but this shit is actually pretty interesting. When these movies are bad, it's usually because they have bad pacing and they get boring and stuff, but this movie doesn't have that problem. It's just solid. It's just a solid as hell movie. 8 out of 10. This one's hard to complain about. Yeah, so uh, the next one's Guardians of the Galaxy. It's good. You already know that. I don't think I'm going to be offending anybody by saying this is probably one of the best MCU movies ever made. I think it's one of the best comic book movies ever made, but that's just me. You can show this to anybody and they can have a good time. These movies usually tease out the weird and crazy elements of the Marvel Universe, but this movie is what really sold everybody on the cosmic Marvel elements. This is where they started fully shoving Infinity Stone shit in people's faces instead of just hinting at it. If you ask me, this is when they realized they could get weird with the Marvel movies. When you watch the movies in Phase 1, they're still playing it super safe. But after this point, shit just gets super weird, and I love it. I really only have good stuff to say about this movie, so... Get ready. The presentation of this movie is so refreshing. The music from Peter Quill's Walkman framing each scene is something that turns this movie from a fun sci-fi flick to an emotional roller coaster. It could have just had a normal score, but giving a sci-fi movie music from the modern world, it's genius. I don't know who came up with this, but it's genius. The music is the only aspect of the presentation that's good. The cinematography is good too. My only knock against Winter Soldier is that the movie is shot with like no personality, and that kind of goes for most Marvel movies. There's some actual really good shots in this movie, and the sequel goes even further than that. I love the first scene with Chris Pratt. Normally, I want my intros to be action-packed or exciting or to set the story up, but this scene perfectly shows his personality and the overall tone of the movie. He could easily be listening to his music while fighting off a bunch of space pirates in a shootout, but showing him goofing off and lackadaisically using his rocket boots, kicking these worm rat things, this sets the tone perfectly. This movie does not take itself seriously at all, and that's the key to making the crazy space stuff easy for audiences to swallow. Plus, when the movie gets serious, it's unexpected and it hits harder. In fact, that tone shapes every element of the movie. There is, in fact, an ERJB in this movie, but it actually works. The villain is generic, but the movie uses this to its advantage. Look at the opening scene with the bad guys. It's purposefully shot like a Ridley Scott movie. It looks like Prometheus. This is on purpose. They're making a colorful sci-fi movie that doesn't take itself too seriously, 
But when you see the villains, the movie's shot like a movie that's taking itself seriously. And what's amazing about this movie is that it made Guardians of the Galaxy a household name. Everybody and their mom knows who Rocket Raccoon is. The best thing this movie does is it makes all these characters likable. If even one of these characters was shitty, this movie would not work. If anything, the only nitpicky problem I have is that Bradley Cooper obviously isn't recording his lines near any of the other actors, and sometimes you can tell. His delivery isn't bad, but sometimes it doesn't match the others tonally. But that's a small thing to complain about, and it only becomes obvious in Guardians 2 and Infinity War. And that's the good thing about this movie, it lets you look past flaws very easily. Normally if a Marvel movie has too many jokes, it can be detrimental. We'll be talking about that in a minute. But here it works perfectly. This movie's fun, it's exciting, it has a lot of soul, and you guys already know that. I don't need to go on about why this movie's good. 9 out of 10, instant classic. Why did I do this? Oh, it's time for Age of Ultron now. So yeah, we're going from one of the best Marvel movies to one of the most disappointing ones. It sucks that Age of Ultron is so important to the overall Marvel Cinematic Universe story because this movie is just really not fun to revisit. The more times you watch this movie, the more you are going to dislike it. This movie isn't horrible by any means, it's not even really bad, but it's one of those Marvel movies. It's kind of bland, and it doesn't really leave you with any lasting emotions. This movie feels way longer than it is due to some really bad pacing issues, and the writing is really hit or miss. Instead of the corny charm of the first Avengers movie, we have dialogue that is just really annoying. I am Thor, son of Odin, and as long as there is life in my breast, I... I'm running out of things to say. It really bugs me that even Ultron is making jokes in this movie. I'm so... I'm sure that's gonna be okay. I'm sorry. Everybody tells the same kinds of jokes, too. Every character talks the same. Nobody has to break anything. Clearly, you've never made an omelet. It makes the characters not unique anymore. Their personalities don't stand out. There's also some weird directorial choices, like this bit where they speed up the footage on Scarlet Witch. What kind of amateur shit is that? I also don't like how Joss Whedon drops the titles in his movies. He puts the titles in the weirdest places. I mean, look at the title drop in this movie. It's so unexpected. Even the action directing is weird. Look at this random shot that I chose. How, how does this even work? So Captain America is holding a door on a moving truck. He gets shot in the face, and then he flies straight up while still moving at the same pace of the truck, but the door's down here, even though the hinges are here? What the fuck am I looking at? I don't like nitpicking in Marvel movies because I could do that all day and these videos would have been like two hours each. The first Avengers movie is pretty hard to nitpick, it's pretty solid, and that's why this movie is really weird in comparison. I'd say the best parts of this movie are the opening scene with that really cool splash page of all the Avengers and then the scene with all of them at the party. I would watch a whole movie of the Avengers hanging out and doing nothing important. This shit is really charming. Except for the fact that Captain America should be able to lift Mjolnir. He's lifted it a bunch of times in the comics. He's the most pure-hearted, virtuous dude ever. He's more virtuous than this bloodthirsty maniac. I also really like that Hawkeye is used more in this movie. Hawkeye gets a lot of love, and that just makes me so happy. Because Hawkeye is really cool in the comics, and in the first Avengers movie, he gets shafted pretty hard. He gets possessed for half the movie, and for the rest of it, he just sits on top of a building and he shoots a couple aliens. In this one, he gets a lot more attention. They poke fun at the fact that he's the only guy on the team who's basically just a normal dude. Pretending to need this guy really brings the team together. He doesn't even really want to be there. He secretly has a family, and that's something he subtly hints at throughout the movie. Your own girlfriend won't be able to tell the difference. Well, I have a girlfriend. That I can't fix. Gotta go. Who's that? Girlfriend. They also tease the fact that he's gonna die from the first 20 minutes of the movie. Oh, he's flatlining. Call it. Time? No, 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 I'm gonna live forever. And since this is Joss Whedon we're talking about, most people watching this movie probably assumed he was done for. But yeah, Hawkeye doesn't die, but he does get some of the best dialogue in the whole movie. Okay, look, the city's flying. We're fighting an army of robots. And I have a bow and arrow. The second half of this movie is really lame though. Everything after the Hulkbuster fight is just really awkward. 
This feels like the kind of movie where they tried to shove in as much stuff as possible, but at the same time, it really doesn't feel like much is happening in this movie. The movie always feels like it's wasting its time. Like, this relationship is not why anybody is buying a ticket for an Avengers movie. And when you think about it, it really doesn't make any sense that they have to stay in that house at the middle point of the movie. They're just wasting their time. There's no reason to stay in the house. Right after this, they go back into the city like it's no problem. Why were you in the house? Like whenever we cut back to Ultron, he's just murdering random people and the Avengers are just chilling in a vacation home. Also, if Ultron wants to kill all the Avengers, like that's his main goal, then why does he kidnap Natasha and leave her in his evil lair? He just leaves her unattended. It's not like he's luring in the Avengers. He leaves her in a completely unrelated location. You know who saves her? Bruce Banner, not Hulk, just regular ass Bruce Banner. He just walks in, gets her out of the cage, and they leave. The final battle also really doesn't carry that much weight with it. Everybody's making jokes the entire time. You'll never You never what? You didn't finish! In some scenes, you'll hear a joke, and then right after, you'll see carnage in the background. Cap, you got incoming. Incoming already came in. Why does Thor fly down to catch these people, and then he flies back up to bring them back on the dangerous flying city? Why didn't you drop them off safely at the bottom? I can see the ground right there. I would be so pissed if I was these guys. Like, thanks a lot, Thor. How did Hulk have the mental fortitude to steal a plane and fly away in the middle of the battle? Bruce Banner didn't do that. The Hulk composed himself enough to steal a spaceship and fly away at the end of the movie. You guys know I hate nitpicking superhero movies. Like I keep saying, these movies all have dumb shit. But when the dumb shit happens over and over, it gets hard to see any of the good stuff. This is one of those movies where if you stop and think about what you're looking at, it doesn't make sense anymore. So, 6 out of 10. Somebody make me a Hawkeye movie. Alright guys, this is it. The moment you've all been waiting for. I'm finally gonna talk about Civil War. Oh wait, no, sorry. No, it's, it says Ant-Man is next, actually. Ant-Man is... It's whatever. I don't know. It exists. I always meant to get around to watching this one, and it came out on my birthday. But I did not want to go see it on my birthday. Going into this movie, I had, like, one expectation. I just wanted a dumb action comedy. I really like Ant-Man in the comics, but the movie isn't that funny, and the movie's not a love letter to the character, so... I kind of just didn't get anything I wanted. To start things off, this movie has probably the biggest ERJB of Phase 2, and probably of any of the movies. This dude is so hilariously evil for no reason. I thought we were using mice. What's the difference? No, really, why aren't you using mice? This guy's fucking insane, and they give you the weirdest explanation as to why he's crazy. Kate from Lost brings up very briefly that the shrinking particles are making him evil. This is seriously never mentioned before, and it's not brought up ever again. If that's the case, why isn't Hank Pym evil? I mean, he's a little bit of a dick, but he's not evil. Also, this main villain's thing is that he turns people into boogers. That is the most horrifying shit I have ever seen. This movie also suffers from the pointless side characters problem. I should have made an acronym for that. In this one, we have T.I., the guy from The Dark Knight doing a really bad Russian accent. Vista job, yes. No, no, I have heard of this robbery. And not Carlos Mencia. And they're all pretty fucking bad. T.I. can't act if his life depended on it. Real quick, something that's bugged me since this movie came out is that Hank Pym isn't around more often in the MCU. In the comics, Hank is really important. They reveal in this movie that Hank Pym has been around the whole time, kind of just doing his own thing, being a super smart guy. Where the fuck have you been? The narrative is kind of split between Hank and Scott, and it doesn't work because usually the mentor character leaves the story or they die so that the main character can have more time to shine. That doesn't happen. Hank is around the whole time, and Scott really has to share the spotlight with him. Paul Rudd also isn't really utilized very well either. He doesn't really get anything funny to say. He's funnier in Civil War. Like, I actually really like him in Civil War, even if he's just there for a cameo. I believe this is yours, Captain America. The only time he really gets to do anything 
everything fun is in the last third. That's where all the action is, that's where the movie actually is fun to watch. These movies are supposed to be about the main hero, they're supposed to sell us on the concept of an Ant-Man, and I really feel like it didn't do that. So it's just a waste. I love Ant-Man in the comics, and I hate that he's kind of a joke in these movies because this movie just didn't work. Anyway, I guess it's a 6 out of 10. It's not bad, it's not great, it's just okay. All right, guys, well, that was phase two. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we'll be talking about phase three, so I'll see you then. Bye, guys. I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about Civil War now. So I guess this is what you guys wanted. You wanted me to talk about Civil War. Because for years I've been saying I don't like Civil War. My reasons are probably not what you think they are. And I should probably mention it now, but I don't think Civil War is a bad movie. This movie just personally makes me upset because I had really high expectations for it. The thing is, this movie has like no stakes, there's no consequence, and by the time Infinity War rolls around, you realize that the events of Civil War didn't really have any effect on the plot at all. The Civil War comic is the top selling Marvel comic of all time. The effects of that story reach so far that I can't even begin to quantify it. It pisses me off because people are going to get mad at me for saying that I like Iron Man 3 because they changed things in the comic. But those same people like this movie, which kind of shits on the comic if we're being honest. You might think it's a little strange that I'm judging a comic book movie based on the comic that it takes its material from, because I usually don't do that. I usually like to judge these as completely separate stories. Because like I said, if I don't, I'll go fucking crazy. But when the comic is done so much better than the movie, it's hard to ignore. As I said before, this is not a bad Marvel movie. In the grand scheme of things, I think it's higher than most of them. But I still personally am very disappointed about it. But let's go ahead and talk about the good stuff first, because there's a lot of stuff I do like in this movie. First off, I am eternally grateful for this movie introducing Spider-Man to the MCU, because Tom Holland's Spider-Man is amazing. The first scene with him is so much fun. Every scene with him is so much fun. Gotta say, that's awesome. Man. I don't know if you've been in a fight before, but there's usually not this much talking. All right, sorry, my bad. I love this boy. I love the subtle ways they show us his powers. For some reason, everybody thinks the first representation of Tom Holland's Spider-Sense is in this scene from Infinity War. But that's not the case. The first time we see his spider sense is in this scene. Ah. Oh god. That's a really clever way to show it. I really like that. Secondly, this movie sold me on T'Challa being in the MCU. I think he's better in this movie than he is in his own movie. In this movie, he's the only guy I'm really rooting for. He's like, oh, the Winter Soldier killed my dad? Okay, I'm gonna fucking kill him now. That's just straight savagery. I love that shit. So I ask you, is both warrior and King, how long do you think you can keep your friends safe from me? Straight up, if somebody told me that, even if I was Captain America, I would shit my pants. Then at the end of the movie, he has this really nice moment of clarity where he realizes that revenge is not the answer. Vengeance has consumed you. It's consuming them. I'm done letting it consume me. T'Challa is really good in this movie, and it sold me on him being in this universe. Uh, thirdly, I like the big text that they started using to set each scene. It's just cool looking. That's it. That's the only reason I like it. It just looks nice. I like that this movie has great characterization for Tony Stark of all characters. It's a Captain America movie, and the character with the most going on is Iron Man. Go figure. The last thing I like about this movie is that it is a good ending for the Captain America trilogy. Starting off his saga with this scene. You just don't know when to give up, do you? I'm gonna do this all day. And ending it with this scene. I could do this all day. Come on. That's pretty cool. I think this movie is a little bit of fun. It has some fun action, and it introduces characters that I do like a lot. But while I don't hate it, I don't really like it either, so let's talk about why. First of all, this movie's fucking boring. This is like four movies happening at the same time. In this movie, we have Tony dealing with his guilt, Captain America chasing Bucky, Bucky dealing with his brainwashing, T'Challa wanting revenge on Bucky. Then we throw Peter Parker into the story and he doesn't have anything to do with the plot, he's just there for the fans. I forgot about the plot about there being more than one Winter Soldier. I swear, you could trim a half hour off of this movie and tighten up the script if you just cut this thread 
ahead and you get rid of Baron Zemo. We don't need one guy pitting the Avengers against each other. The concepts of these two factions disagreeing with each other is enough to run the story. We really don't need a super villain there to be like, ah, I'm going to make them fight each other. Also, his plan to break up the Avengers and get them to kill each other it doesn't make any sense, and it didn't even work. At the end of the movie, he's like, Haha, I really succeeded, you guys are the losers. But you didn't. Nobody died. Your goal was to get them to kill each other, and they didn't kill each other. Tony and Steve aren't even really mad at each other at the end of the movie. At the end of the Civil War comic, Captain America dies. But no, this movie just has a bunch of stupid people doing stupid shit. Everybody in this movie is stupid. In case you didn't know, the main conflict of this movie is that the government wants to put limitations on superheroes because of what happened in Sokovia with Ultron. People are also kind of upset about some things that happened in this movie, like Scarlet Witch blowing up this little building on accident. But would people really be more mad at the Avengers in this situation than they would be at the terrorists who tried to kill way more people than that? In this movie, people are mad at the Avengers because they aren't saving literally everyone. Who's going to avenge my son Stark? Well, they did avenge him. They killed Ultron. I don't think you know what the word avenge means. Now, yeah, I'll admit, the Ultron incident is kind of the exception to this rule. Ultron was built by Tony Stark, and that was kind of a big mistake. It's not a good look. But in the real world, all that would happen is Tony Stark gets arrested for being a war criminal. In this world, the Sokovia Accords are completely unwarranted. The Avengers have not done enough wrong in the world yet. You remember that scene where Thunderbolt Ross is trying to convince them that they should sign the Accords by showing them footage of their battles in the other movies? It makes absolutely no sense. I'm gonna go ahead and say what the Avengers should have told him in this scene. New York. Oh yeah, uh, aliens from another realm attacked the city. They're trying to get a magic jewel. We literally had nothing to do with the destruction in this movie. In case you don't know, there were only like six of us at the time, and only half of us had superpowers. Washington, D.C. Nazis infiltrated the government and tried to kill thousands of people with airships that the government built to keep surveillance on the world. This was you. You did this one. Sokovia. Okay, yeah, that one, that one was our fault. Also, look at how Ross says perspective. Perspective. Why'd you say that weird? In the comics, the event that starts everything is a lot more clear cut. A superhero reality show tries to bust some high profile bad guys, and due to their carelessness, they blow up an entire school. Like 300 kids die. This is also after Bucky bombs Philadelphia, killing hundreds of people. Plus, Scarlet Witch went crazy and caused cataclysmic damage to the multiverse. So this is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Now given everything that we're told in this movie, even if I personally don't think the Accords make sense, this is how things are gonna go. But Steve has no reason to disagree with the Accords. The only thing he's really upset about is that he doesn't want the government to tell him where he can go and what he can do. In all of the movies before this, he is totally fine with following orders. This movie makes it seem like Steve is a fucking maniac for disagreeing with anybody. And he is. He's a complete idiot. He doesn't have a reason to disagree with this. He almost signs on once Tony says that they can send Bucky in for psych treatment. But Steve still says no. This doesn't make any sense at all. Everybody in this movie is being really dumb. Another problem you start to realize with this movie is that there's no tension. At all. We're still friends, right? Depends on how hard you hit me. This conflict has never really taken that seriously because the characters who did sign on kind of disagree that they're not really gonna obey the rules anyway. Then what the fuck is the point of this story at all? Even Tony, the guy who's really supposed to be fighting for the Accords, isn't obeying them. He brings on Peter Parker to fight with him, and then he's like, okay, go on and do Spider Man stuff now, even though it's illegal to do so. You're telling me that every time someone does anything in the other movies, it's because of the Accords? What about Doctor Strange? Is Doctor Strange allowed to be a superhero? Does he count? Is he registered with the government? Nobody's really mad at each other until the last bit of the movie. And even then, Tony isn't upset about the Accords. He's upset about his other shit. If you want this fight to actually mean something, you have to build the motivations from the very beginning of the story and stick with them. If you want to have a story about how Bucky killed Tony's mom, then tell that story. Don't worry about all this other shit because it didn't do anything, it doesn't matter. And that's basically how the movie goes. I hope by now I've made my point, because this movie is just messy as hell. It manages to cover up most of the plot by the end, but the conclusion is so lackluster. But if we're being completely honest, the number one thing that would have made this movie amazing is if it wasn't made. At least, not yet.
I personally really believe that this movie would have done so well if it came later. This shot here is exactly why. This is just a handful of superheroes in a parking lot, barely fighting each other. Instead of the dozens of heroes all with their own distinct motivations, fighting for a conflict that has been brewing for years, I've been wondering where they could go with the MCU after Infinity War ends. Any more threats from space are gonna seem really lame compared to Thanos. Honestly, Infinity War being so good makes this movie look a lot worse. I think Civil War would have been a really good follow-up. You could draw upon every conflict that has come before, and I think it would have worked out a lot better. I don't know, I think this movie just lacks the finality that the comic has. But it isn't a bad movie, and whenever I said that before, I was mostly shitposting. But I really personally don't like it because I feel like a lot of potential was wasted. I feel like they blew their load way too early. 6 out of 10, don't at me. I hate you. Alright guys, well this took a lot out of me. Alright, I know we still have phase 3, so give me another week, I'll come back, we'll wrap it all up. It's not as many movies to talk about because I've already talked about most of them. Plus, at the end of the next video, we're gonna rank all the movies from worst to best so that we can see how they all stack up next to each other, all right? And uh, I gotta clean up my face and like all this mess I made. So I'll see you guys next week. Um, bye. See?